students. Today we are going to talk about the AP drawing portfolios. So I have to share with y'all today the 2019 student exemplars. So every year College Board puts a perfect portfolio up on the website. Sometimes they put several different examples of a range of scores. So I will eventually be sharing those with you as well. But um, this is a portfolio from 2019 that received a perfect score. So if you wanna know what that six looks like, this is the video for you. If you would like to go visit this portfolio yourself, the link is included in the presentation. All right, so let's talk about um, first some things that are a little bit different now. So in 2019, AP still had um, three sections that you had to submit with your portfolio and they had a different number of images that you had to submit. So you had to do three different sections. You had to do a range of approaches section. You had to do a selected works section, which we still have to do. And you had to do a sustained investigation section, which we still have to do. So because there were three sections, there were 12 images in this range of approaches section, and there were 12 images in the sustained investigation section. They've actually taken away one of those sections, so now you only have to do two. You have to do your selected works, which are five pieces that we mail in, and you have to do your sustained investigation, which is now 15 pieces or images. So that is different. So. Um, keep that in mind as we're looking at this portfolio. So in this video, I'm just going to talk to you about that range of approaches section. And maybe if you're a little bit ahead, you might be asking yourself, well, why is she showing us this if it's not included anymore? I still think it is valuable to see what the student um, did for this section because it shows you some different examples of what AP level artwork looks like. It might also spark some ideas for you to do an entire sustained investigation. So since the student made a perfect score, what that means is every single piece in this range of approach, approaches section is good enough to have inspired a sustained investigation or a series of 12 to 15 pieces of art. So we're gonna look at these pieces. Um, I'll talk a little bit about them and then um, that will be it for this video and I'll get into the other sections in the other videos in this series. All right, so let's get started. First, you have this image right here, 24 by 16. So we have the size and then it is in colored pencil. So we have the medium. So if you look at this, um, it is drawn so nicely. Once I know it's colored pencil, I know it's colored pencil. But before then, it was almost hard to tell what it was made out of because the student did such a great job. This next piece is acrylic paint. So just a very simple still life, but very beautifully done, um, especially the play of light and shadow and the drapery. All right, this piece is 26 by 20. So it would actually be a little bit larger than probably would fit um, in the portfolio, but it was a digital image, so that's fine. And this is black and white charcoal, another drapery study, beautifully done. All right, now we're getting into more of an illustration and this is done with ballpoint pens. So don't feel like you have to have expensive materials, charcoal, ballpoint pens, all very cheap materials. And this is a 24 by 16 piece, very nicely drawn. Um, I might have changed the composition just a little bit, but overall the technique is beautiful. All right, then this piece right here is a camera picture, um, a photograph that the student took and then they drew on top of it in Photoshop. So I love showing this image to my drawing students because it shows you that you really can incorporate photography into a drawing portfolio. This is definitely about mark making. This is definitely about line and um, space. And so I think that this is an excellent example of not only um, using photography in a drawing portfolio, but also look at the humor there. There's these really big rats and then the photograph has a bunch of cats in a parking lot. 
Um, so that is super creative, uh, beautiful example of what students can do with their portfolio. All right, here is a Photoshop example. So something that has changed recently is in the past you would have um, included anything that was done with Photoshop or photography in a um, 2D design portfolio. But what AP decided, um, which I agree with, is that a lot of times when you are doing digital art, you are not just collaging or doing 2D design, you are actually drawing. So this is definitely about mark making and line and drawing and painting. And so even though this is made in Photoshop, it is included in a drawing portfolio that made a perfect score. This is also a Photoshop image, same kind of thing that I said before, but this one incorporates a little bit more of that rendering type of painting. So you've got the rendering of form, this, image in Photoshop, this image in Photoshop. Then you have this drawing with ebony pencil, this painting in acrylic, this in Photoshop. And so the last two images, even though they're very different mediums, I can definitely tell that it is the same student. It is exactly the same style, but it's not copying um, someone else's style per se. It looks like it is unique to that student. So um, that is another really good thing to glean from this portfolio or this section of this portfolio. Um, also the fact that they arranged their images in such a way that it gradually got better. Um, so that way the reader is, uh, when they're grading your portfolio, the first image that they see is impressive, but then they're really impressed with your growth at the end. So keep in mind that we can put your images in any order that we want to. So um, you want to, you know, do that to your advantage, like end with an image that's going to leave a good um, impression in the mind of your score right at the end when they're deciding what score you should get. Um, another thing that this um, student probably experienced, now I don't know this student, this is just from the College Board website, but the fact that about halfway through, I start seeing a lot of Photoshop images, that tells me that maybe that student got a computer at Christmas or got a new tablet at Christmas that allowed them to work in Photoshop. So all of that kind of stuff is the sort of thing that AP readers are interested in seeing. So don't feel like you have to, you know, come up with some smoke and mirrors to be like, oh yeah, I was using Photoshop the whole time. No, like, we're teachers, like the, your readers are professors and teachers, so they know, um, you know, kind of like the real life experiences of the students that they've taught. So um, me seeing a student move from more traditional materials to all of a sudden halfway through using um, more digital stuff is not a bad thing at all. That is actually a positive thing. It shows that they're growing and evolving as an artist. All right, so that is it for this section of the portfolio um, as far as the images are concerned, but I'm going to explain to you um, exactly why the AP readers gave this portfolio a perfect score. So I'm gonna read their score rationale. So it says the, war the work demonstrates an informed investigation of a broad range of visual concepts and compositions. There is successful investigation of line quality in images five and 10, light and shade in images two and 12, rendering of form in images one, two, and 11, surface manipulation in images two and three, the illusion of depth in images six and nine, and mark making in images 10 and 12. And all those things are those drawing, um, uh, you know, techniques and um, approaches that we talked about um, a couple weeks ago. The work clearly demonstrates original vision, a variety of innovative ideas and risk taking along with an inventive articulation of a broad range of elements, line, shape, space, value, and color, and principles, balance, contrast, rhythm, unity, figure, ground, relationships, and emphasis of design. So don't feel like, um, you know, me and Miss Wright taught you those for no reason. That's something that AP wants to see. Those are um, concepts that are going to be a part of your artistic practice forever. Um, see, for instance, the use of colors to create a focal point of red against a white and black background in images six, or the repetition of circles used to create rhythm in image eight. 
The work clearly demonstrates a broad range of intentions or purposes, fantasy, mundane reality, portraiture, abstraction, and still life. The work also demonstrates successful use of both analog and digital processes. The work is confident and evocative as a whole. It engages the viewer with visual qualities. An image for the natural world is exploding from the top of the girl's head. The tight rendering of the imagery standing in contrast to the non-realistic juxtaposition. Image nine also shows a dramatic juxtaposition of the human and the natural worlds. The human figure wearing an animal skull is pouring liquid from a bottle into a vast canyon, creating a surreal image. The use of sheep and open eye in image 12 remind the viewer of common sayings related to sleep. Think about that cliche project, counting sheep, sleeping with one eye open. And the resultant composition is striking and evocative. So all these kind of concepts that I'm introducing to you slowly are things that um, have been successful in AP in the past. The work is technically excellent. Materials and media, pencil, paint, charcoal, and digital processes are used effectively to express idea ideas. Note, for instance, the use of pencil and images tend to create contrast and areas of emphasis within the drawing, and brush strokes are used effectively in image two to render forms in the still life. When digital or photographic processes are used, the work demonstrates a sophisticated understanding of analog drawing issues. In image six, for example, digital drawing techniques are used successfully as in the blurring of the figure designed to show the flight of the bird through the girl's body. All right, so one little trade secret I wanna tell y'all is um, sometimes, no, not this time, because I've taught this lesson several times, but sometimes I just pull a portfolio and I just talk about the images from what I already know about art. And nine times out of 10, I am very close to the score rationale and what I say. Um, and what we have focused on when training you with those vocabulary and analyzing art is we as art teachers at Hernando High School are training you to be able to do that as well. So um, what I want you to focus on um, in AP is creating your work, incorporating all those ideas about good art that we have been talking about all throughout your high school career. So um, part of being an artist is being able to look at other people's artwork and see where they have done things effectively. And so um, part of going through these portfolios with you is training you to be able to do that, not only to other people's artwork, but then being able to turn that around and do that to your own artwork as well. So um, I'm really excited about scoring portfolios with you each week. I think it will really help you grow as an artist. All right, and make sure that you find my next video where I go into the selected works section for this same student. Um, so I can show you what they turned in for their top five quality pieces. Have a good day.